I'd like to call the uh, June 13th uh, meeting of the Roger Bell Studies Planning Commission to order. Um, to start, I'd like to ask our director, um, Ranian, to lead us in the budget questions. Thank you. Stand, place your right hand over your heart, and begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Can we have a roll call? Yes. Commissioner Leon? Here. Commissioner Bradley? Here. Commissioner Ennheiser? Here. Commissioner Nelson? Here. Commissioner Palmer? Here. Vice Chair James? Here. And Chairman Krupashank is absent, sir. <laughs> Thank you. Um, welcome to everybody in the audience and to those who are watching from their homes. Um, uh, please turn off any cell phones if you have them on. Uh, I see a number of people reaching for their pockets. Uh, this is being televised and recorded, so we would appreciate your cooperation. Also, if anyone wants to speak either on a matter that's on the agenda or a matter that's not on the agenda, you need to fill out a speaker slip and turn it into the table to my left. So if uh, you haven't done that, please do that now. Um, start with communications. No, let's start with approval of the agenda first. Uh, do I have a motion? Uh, Mr. Chairman, question. I guess a question for, for you and the director. Uh, the two items on the agenda, I thought we decided those two items. Which two items are you referring to agenda item number one? Or two, I believe it's two. Two and three. So item number two, there was a motion to approve the project and direction to bring back the resolution for consideration. So public hearing and that component of hearing public testimony was closed, but it's still considered a public hearing item. So it would be at the commission's pleasure whether they want to open um, the public hearing to hear testimony or not. You don't have to. There are There is one speaker here for that item this evening. So that's going to be at the commission's pleasure. Then in regards to item number three, that was a continued public hearing to tonight's meeting. So a decision has not been made on that item. So just for my education in the future, uh, <laughs> back to item number two, uh, would those you know, where the staff is coming back with the resolution, would those generally go under the consent calendar? They, they, they could if the meeting, um, yes, they could be placed on the consent calendar. Okay. Thank you. Thanks for that information. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. I have a motion to approve the agenda. So moved. Second. Okay. Any objection? No. Okay, I don't think we need a roll call on this, do we? No. Yeah. Um, okay, thank you. Uh, okay, um, communications. Yes, um, there are quite a few items I'd like to report on since we last met back in um, our May 9th. So at the last city council meeting, the June 6th city council meeting, there have been some items that I feel are noteworthy for the commission. Um, so the first thing I'd like to uh, report on are some of the code amendments that the council has been initiating over the last couple of meetings that will be coming to the planning commission for your consideration of order recommendation to the council. Um, essentially, what I should explain is that the staff is talking short of doing an overhaul update to the development code. However, as we're processing applications and hearing some of the discussion, not only from the public, but as well as from the commissioners, we're taking note of some of the inconsistencies or clarifications that are needed in the development code, and as we recognize that we're moving forward with initiating code amendments so that we can correct those, those inconsistencies. And so some of the topics and some of the code amendments that you'll be hearing this summer that will begin the discussion, and I've reported on this one particularly is the amendment to the uh, it relates to arterial fences and walls. We'll be bringing that item to the commission. Um, the council just recently initiated a code amendment to development standards section of the development code dealing with setbacks, 
um, block coverage and things of that nature. And then an item on the June 20th City Council meeting is to initiate an amendment to our sign ordinance and to, to clarify some of the inconsistencies with the sign ordinance. So those items will be coming to the commission this summer. So I just want to kind of give you a heads up on that. And then at the um, June 6th City Council meeting, there are two items that I thought would be of of interest to the commission. One has to do with three properties that are Rue de la Charlene on the east end of the city that are in the city of, the properties are in the city of Los Angeles, but to access those blocks are through uh, Rancho Palos Verde Street. Um, the council initiated the annexation process um, to consider bringing those properties into the city of Rancho Palos Verdes. So the first step in that process is to actually have the planning commission consider uh, a zoning map, a general plan, land use map amendment. So that should be coming forward to you later this summer. And then the, um, the council was to asked to introduce some amendments to the fire code as it relates to Title 15 of the development code, of the municipal code. The, the council had some concerns regarding how those amendments are gonna affect property owners and the costs that are related to it that a property owner would have to bear. And so they continued that matter to a date uncertain and ask staff to come back with some more information from CalWater and the fire department as to what requirements um, or how it affects property owners, such as the installation and cost um, for fire sprinklers in the, for a house and the installation of new fire hydrants. Um, and then lastly, on the June 20th City Council agenda, that agenda is going out tonight, there is the appeal of the commission's approval of the Rolling Ridge Road uh, approval. And specifically, the the component of that appeal has to do with foliage on the property, not the neighbor compatibility of the structure. So, uh, staff has worked with the appellant and the applicant, and we feel like we came up with some some language that they're both in agreement to to amend the conditions. And so that's going to be heard by the city council uh, on Tuesday evening, and we'll ask the chair to attend that meeting in case there are any questions. That that. Um, is the city council items, and then in terms of staff items, I'd like to report that some late correspondence has been given to you this evening on agenda items two and three. And um, you received an email from the city clerk a couple weeks ago re uh, requesting that you attend a mandatory sexual harassment course that's going to be held on August 29th at 7 p.m. here at City Hall. So I just want to make sure you get back in touch with um, the city clerk on that matter that she'd like to. And it's open to other cities in the South Bay. It, it's a mandatory requirement. No other city is offering this, this uh, in-person training, and so we're, we're taking the lead on from offering that. Um, and that concludes um, staff's report. Thank you very much. Uh, the next item on the agenda is um, uh, commission communications. Does anybody have anything they'd like to mention? I'll recognize uh, Mr. Tomlin first. Very good. Thank you. Just a follow-up question on, our, <coughs> on the August 29th at the City Hall here, our our Rancho Palos Verde City Hall. I believe that the workshop's going to be in at Hess Park. Oh, Hess Park. Is there a time? On the it's 7 p.m. 7 p.m. 7 p.m. 7 p.m. Okay, very good. Thank you. Um, yes, Mr. Chair and, and to the Commission, um, you usually don't report this out, but there's been a, uh, I've received a number of personal either emails or calls reference to the cell tower situation. Um, more than usual amount. And, uh, so, uh, there are some questions I probably have when we get to the future agenda items. Some questions that came up. I, I'm not sure if that's the appropriate time, but uh, yeah, I, I would recommend you defer that to future agenda items because it is on the June 27th agenda. Very good. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, with your patience, patience on the Planning Commission, I want to announce my candidacy for the RPD City Council. I've had the pleasure of serving the citizens of RPD for the last 12 years. First uh, on the Finance Advisory Committee and for the last eight years here on the Planning Commission. The members of the Planning Commission have always given me the benefit of their wisdom and support. I'll be calling on you for that again. One last point. Uh, although it's probably a uh, violation of campaign wisdom, I just want to say that, as you know, John Kershank is, is, uh, is also running and I think uh, John would make a great councilman. 
Uh, let me just say that assuming both John and I can, uh, are successful, uh, I think it would be wonderful if we could work together and bring the kind of collegial spirit that we have here on the Planning Commission to the City Council. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, and good luck. Uh, the next item on the agenda is comments from the audience. Do we have any speakers uh, on items that are not on the agenda? Uh, we have two speakers. And um, each speaker will be given three minutes. And the first speaker is Gene Seiger. Uh, thank you. My name is Gene Steiger. I live at 28802 Crestridge Road, Andrew Wells, Burgess. I want to thank the Planning Commission and city officials for the wife and I the, give the opportunity to, to express our opposition to a cell site at 28809 Crestridge Road, which is by Crown Castle, site ASG 31. This mock up cell site is directly outside our driveway. You can see the lower right hand picture. You can see the cell site, we can see the cell site from our dining room, front door, two bedrooms, and every time we're in the driveway. The Ridgecrest neighborhood comprises of Crestridge Road, Middledale Lane, Middlecrest Road, and Robin Beauty Lane. It's 107 homes. In the 1970s, 70s, 90% uh, of the homeowners voted for underground utilities, and they had to pay for these utilities, but it wasn't free. Before that, they had poles. Now, Crown Castle, the commercial enterprise, carelessly installed fiber optic cable in 2016 to this very location without approval of the cell site itself. So it means they, they, boy, they thought, in order to spend that money, they thought they were going to get this approval really easily. And I don't know how this happened. We bought our house because of this rural environment that has all underground utilities, no street lights, curbs, or utility poles. And the only thing we got is peacocks, raccoons, and coyotes. This cell site tower and a large equipment box, five foot high, violates negatively neighborhood compatibility and will impact our property values. We've been assured this by some real estate uh, authorities. We have many seniors here, many of who paid for these underground utilities many years ago. And, and they're concerned with radiation. I believe that some people aren't worried about it. But, and also the destruction of our environment, which is a principal thing that we're worried about. Plus the noise from cooling fans. These things make noise. My wife and I are in period. Every time we see the mock-up, it stands out like a sore thumb. And it affects our sleeping. When we get up at night, we're all ginned up because this thing was put in on June 1st, which is our second wedding anniversary. And that was our wedding, that was our present for our for, uh, anniversary. So what we'd like to say is, please find a more suitable site. We were thinking about maybe uh, across from John, St. John Fisher, the corner of Preston Crenshaw, because there's no houses there. And what we'd like to do is, we invite you to visit our 28802 Crestridge Road, take a look, go on our driveway, take a look, and then if you would like to have this, and just ask yourself, would you want to have this cell site in front of your home? Thank you very much. We're going to go out tonight now and try to get more petitions, signatures. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Much time. Thank you. The next speaker is Hello. Jeff Calvina. Good evening, Commissioners. Uh, just to clarify, Jeff Calvina. So I'm a radio frequency engineer. I live here in Rancho Palos Verdes. And uh, I've been fighting on this uh, self driving issue for the last two years. I got involved uh, back in 2015 when Crown Castle showed up on my cul de sac and started installing a 30 foot tall cell tower with an engine over here. I strongly advocated along with a number of the Richard Wireless ordinance that were passed back uh, last year. And that's why these are going to come in before you. I've spoken before the, uh, the City Council many times, and I've also spoken before the Palos Verdes Estates Planning Commission dozens of times. Uh, the process is about a year and a half ahead over there, and the residents asked me to volunteer to help them figure this out. I have to tell you that the Sykes Crown Castle is proposing to not meet the requirements of our ordinance. Um, under design requirements, our ordinance requires all accessory equipment to be located underground. All of these sites have an above ground cabinet. Under location restrictions, uh, sites are not allowed on residential streets or on new poles. And uh, this gentleman here, the site proposed, violate both of those. 
Under the ordinance, you must make specific findings to approve a non-compliant site. And this is spelled out under exceptions 12.18.199. In that section, it talks about how you must find this denial of the site would cause an effective prohibition of service. This is a key phrase. It's from the Telecommunications Act of 1996. And the courts have ruled an effective prohibition occurs when a site is needed to fill a significant gap in coverage and when the site has proposed it, the least intrusive means of doing so. What we've seen over in Palos Verdes states is Crown Castle has over and over made these claims. And we've been very effective in my analysis, the measurements, I have sophisticated test equipment, and through analyzing the stuff that Crown Castle has submitted that they just haven't made these cases. So I ask you going forward, I'm sure you've all read the ordinance, but please go back and look at section 12.18.080, design requirements. Section 12.18.200, location restrictions. And section 12.18.190, exceptions, because these are going to be the key points, the key background points going forward. And I look forward to speaking to you more in the future. Thank you. Thank you. Question else, may I have a comment? Yeah, sir. Excuse me, sir, could you please cite again those three paragraphs in the code? Sure. You said 12.18.200, 12.18.190. Did you have a third cite? Yes, 12.18.080 is design requirements. And that's where it speaks about the requirement that the equipment be located underground. Thank you. And then 200 was location restrictions and 190 was exceptions. Thank you very much. Okay, moving on to the consent calendar. The first item is approval of the May 9, 2017 minutes. Anybody have a comment or motion on that? Mr. Chair, I'll have to recuse. And I'll need to recuse, Mr. Chairman. And I will need to recuse. For the audience's benefit, we had a small turnout that night as far as commissioners. I would like to make one correction to the minutes as presented. Under item number one, it states that Commissioner Bradley moved to approve the minutes as amended, seconded by Commissioner Nelson. I think that there wasn't a separate procedure by which we amended the minutes to show the typos that Commissioner Nelson pointed out. So I think that sentence should read, Commissioner Bradley moved to approve the minutes, amended to correct the typos, and was seconded by Commissioner Nelson. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
uh, the director before our meeting started. Uh, he said this is something that's the discretion of the commission as opposed to the chair. Uh, so I invite comments. I'll comment that we I'll comment that we close the public hearing and that it remains closed. I, I agree with Commissioner Nelson that that's procedurally the way we should do this. Uh, at the same time, I sort of feel that um, we're here to serve the public, and if the public wants to speak, particularly if there's only one speaker, I'm inclined to let him or her have his. Uh, two or three minutes and let's do what they have to say. Uh, anybody else have any thoughts? I would support that. I'd like to keep our, our planning commission open and transparent. And uh, if that requires a little bit of uh, manipulation of rules, I'm all for it. Do you need to vote on this? No. I, I will, if you want to just chair a rule. If you want to open the public hearing, it's your yeah. Okay, I'll reopen the public hearing, and uh, uh, so who's our speaker? The speaker is Yantine Warren. Thank you. Hi, I'm just here. Um, I was invited by Jason. To write a letter, and that's the reason I'm here. I didn't brain on the party. I thought you were supposed to come, but um, I'm really here just to try to get a bit of clarification on your estimation of appropriate neighborhood scale, um, only because I'm just a little confused about how the hearings went. With the first hearing, it seemed predominantly that all of you seemed to think that the application was out of scale. Um, I remember, you know, five people in a row saying. This house is too big. Your presence above grade is too large. Five people in a row said, "Put your footage in the basement," which said to me. And the secondary comment was, "You know, you guys predicated your application on this house in the corner, which was 4,800 square feet and 26 feet high. We think you used the wrong precedent." One commission member said, "I would never have passed that house had it been on my watch." That's how it went. Second hearing, of course. I think half of you weren't here, and the house was approved. There was no basement, and I think the footage they did reduce a bit to 4,500 square feet, but it was still two stories, all above grade, no basement. They shortened it by two feet, for those that don't remember, which is significant, thankfully. Thank you, thank you for that. That was helpful. Um, but to me, it still didn't meet the requirement that the house should be in scale with the neighborhood. Um, and so I, I just want some clarity on what that means. Um, you know, I, I'm hoping to hear that, given your ruling, that you have, in fact, and I want, I would hope that you could say it for the record, that explicitly a house that is 4,500 square feet and and 4,500 square feet above grade, meaning two stories, that that is in fact compatible with my neighborhood scale. And I'd be very happy to hear you say that. I just like it stated for the record, because you know, sooner or later I'm going to remodel on my house. And I want to know what's fair and what I'm entitled to. You know, that's basically what I'm asking for. And you know, I would suggest that if you're unable to make that statement or commitment, I feel like the project should be appealed and that I shouldn't have to pay for that appeal. Um, and I'm hoping that you don't try to evade my question in saying that every house is considered on a case-by-case -case basis because the topography of my house in relation to those above me on Via Rivera is the same relationship as the house on Rio Lang to me. It's, it's the same slope, essentially. And if you have to predicate the response on assuming that I'm being truthful in that statement, then please do. If I'm not, this is not meant to be a scenario where I'm trying to entrap anyone into a future decision. I'm just trying to understand what's fair and what's realistic for my neighborhood. So um, that's it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Um, or I don't know what's appropriate here. Is this should we attempt to respond to this or is uh, I think we have. I, I, I believe the commission has. Um, it's reflected in the resolution that you Commission has found that this project is compatible with the neighborhood addresses uh, the bulk and mass findings. It's all captured in the resolution, so you don't need to engage into that discussion unless you uh, desire to. 
six or seven years ago to go to something called a floor area ratio, which would be, which set quantitative limits depending on the size of the other structures uh, in the neighborhood. Uh, and the commission in its wisdom at the time uh, decided to keep the more subjective bulk and mass rules that we have now, which are more in the eye of the beholder. And so, when you ask for guidance, I think for us, you know, know that developers and architects want the same kind of guidance, and the commission decided six years ago not to give that guidance. With the logic being that in neighborhoods are subjective, and and and, the, and so by not establishing a quantifiable uh, limit or or envelope, what we did was left it open to interpretation and unfortunately so unfortunately what you're asking for under our current rules we can't get. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman Heiser. And um, I, I don't think I can say it better. Uh, it is subjective. Uh, and that's why you've got seven people up here that are trying to do their best to make those kind of decisions. If it was something we could feed into a computer then it wouldn't need us maybe. But thank you for your comments tonight. Um, uh, okay, I'll close the public hearing again and uh, invite a motion on the um, uh, staff recommendation. Commissioner sure. Nelson. I'll move staff recommendation. Um, Mr. Chair? Yes. One question. We just, I just need to clarify something because we have three commissioners who were here last time. And the three who are not, uh, those who watched the video and read the staff report and have, are familiar with the entirety of the record, may vote on the passage of the uh, resolution tonight and anybody who did not, then of course you cannot. So I guess the first thing to, to establish is whether or not we actually have a quorum in order to be able to vote on the resolution. Okay, so should I ask the question, who's watched the video and? Yes. All right, let's do that then. Of, uh, of the people who were not here, <laughs> I guess, uh, which ones of you have were able to watch the, the video in its entirety? And, and... Mr. Chair, I was going to pop in here. Uh, I have not watched the video, and so I have to accuse myself of it. <clears throat> and I have a question. The standard used to be a review of the minutes. Is it now mandatory on the video? Well, generally speaking, it depends what the what the issue is with something like this as a public hearing with an entitlement, then uh, yes, it would be to watch the video and, and read the staff report. That's new. So is it oh. both or one or the other? Because the previous standard was reviewing the minutes. All right, well, if, the, if that's the standard that you've been using, then continue with the minutes. I will review to make sure that that is adequate, but if I think that's you're fair. using... From, from my perspective. Yeah. And I have heard the events, but like Commissioner Tom and I have not seen the video. So with that being said, I have read the minutes and everything like that, so I'm not sure that leaves my uh, vote. <laughs> Gentlemen, I have to rely on our counsel on this. It's not something I have any knowledge about. Yes, so if you reviewed the minutes, you may vote. Okay, okay thank so you. That's I'll, I'll, not, so I'll recuse myself then. Yeah. All right, is there anybody, anybody who has not read the minutes? <laughs> I have read the minutes, not watched the video, and I'm still going to review it myself. I think there's probably some information that took place on the night. I don't feel comfortable putting my life here. I have a new rule. Whenever we have a meeting with 24 commissioners, you're not allowed to skip the next meeting. <laughs> <laughs> well, it seems like it, it, even with, you have a majority vote of the quorum, even if the quorum's not there, it seems like that would be okay. But if you have three votes, then. Okay, so we have one recusal and 
rest of people voting, we have a motion. Uh, I don't you, have a, you have a quorum to vote on the motion. There's a motion on the floor. We don't have a second. We do not have a second. Or a second. All right. Okay. Any discussion? Sure. Commissioner Brennan. So I expressed my um, opinions and my view of this at the last meeting. Um, I was the one to send the vote. I still strongly oppose this based on the bulk and mass. I don't think it is fitting. Um, the speaker that we just recently heard from reiterated some of the issues that we discussed at the previous meeting, uh, a lot of them having to do with uh, below ground. It's true that they removed the basement and revised plans. Um, I still think that this uh, project is beyond the scope, of, uh, scope, but beyond the bulk and mass and neighborhood compatibility for that neighborhood. Um, it does rely on the corner lot, which was a um, an outlier, certainly, if you look at the numbers. And I certainly would still recommend or encourage my uh, fellow commissioners not to support this project. Any comments? Commissioner Brown? Let me ask a question that is concerning what the speaker had to say about um, paying a fee to appeal this. Is that something we have any control over? That's that something that she should just ask the city council about? Um, the commission does not have control over that. If someone wants to appeal the decision made by the commission, there is a fee. It's a $2,275 fee. It is refundable if the council overturns the planning commission's decision is partially refundable if they make certain modifications to the project. Understood. Okay, let's call the question. Okay. Commissioner Leon? I'm recusing. Okay. So, staying Commissioner Ebenezer? Yes. Commissioner Tomlin? Uh, yes. Commissioner Bradley? No. Commissioner Nelson? Yes. Vice Chair James? Yes. Question, Mr. Chairman, on the last item. In the past, I think we've been able to excuse the filing fee or give me some guidance on that if you would are. No, um, the commission does not have the authority to waive uh, any fees. Um, fee waivers are only considered by the city council for specific requests. Um, in this case, appeals do need to be paid. And because they are uh, refundable, if there are decisions made, that changed the planning commission's decision. So, uh, so help me. In the past, we have what recommended to the city council. You may have recommended, but ultimately, we, there's a mechanism in place where there's a mechanism in place where a fee can be refunded if, if the commission, if the council makes a change to the project. Okay. Just a, can I make a motion on the motion? The motion's already passed. And I understand that. But you have a comment. Can I make a motion after the motion? <laughs> Let me tell you what my motion would be that we recommend to the city council that they waive the filing fee for council now. You, you can make that. You can make that motion. Okay. Well, you may not go anywhere if there isn't a second. Oh, I'll second that. <laughs> okay, we have we have a motion. Uh, it has been seconded. And that, is, that, is, that is to recommend to raise the, the filing fee. Mr. Nelson. Mr. Chairman. I, maybe just for also for the record, though, even though I didn't see this particular you know uh, hearing at the time. Did read the minutes, but I was president for March 28th, where we did have a discussion on it for the first, first time. time. So, you know, I am familiar and not with the case, so I'll just okay. get that for the record. Commissioner Nelson. And I admire the thought process of my two fellow commissioners, however, I do think, in my mind, you're setting a very bad precedent for anybody who comes before here. And you decide suddenly, that, oh, well, golly gee, maybe we should just forego the fee on this. That's not our common practice, and no, I cannot support the motion. Mr. Yeah, and just in defense of the motion, and, and maybe 
Commissioner Tom with their way in on this. Uh, it is some, it's the kind of thing we've done in the past. We don't have the power to enforce it. Uh, we simply request the city council to, to consider it. And, uh, you know, I have, I have some sympathy with, uh, with Commissioner Bradley that uh, they're, they're a strong opinion on both sides, and I think this is a legitimate issue for the city council to consider. And if the neighbors of this project uh, can make their case before the city council, uh, then I think a, a refund would be appropriate. I, I, just, I just want to clarify. Um, Municipal code is very clear as to what um, the council can do and what applications they can waive fees for and under what circumstances. The way the code reads for appeal fees, it's designed in a way where any decision that's appealed and if there's a change to that decision, even if it's just a, a change to the condition, that appeal fee is refundable. So it's already built into the system um, to to address the, the fees if, if, if it's warranted for the appeal to be heard of me and decisions to be changed. And, and, we, and, and we always report that in our staff reports to the city council that they do have what we would do if they, if they make a change. If they, if they uphold the planning commission's decision and make no change, there's no reimbursement. If there is a change, there is a reimbursement. Okay, and I'll, did you have something further, Commissioner? Yeah, I just, you know, the director is acting as if the motion's going to pass. I'm not sure it's going to really pass, but uh, I just want to make sure that we all know that it's something we've done in the past on particularly controversial issues. Uh, you know, we left the door open so that uh, so that the, the cost of the appeal uh, was not necessarily the ultimate barrier to, to uh, the council considering the issue. Thank you, Mr. Jones. Thank you. Okay, I'll make final comments here. I I agree with Commissioner Nelson. I think it's uh, not the correct precedent. This was not. You know, a close issue with it past five to one. Uh, I have a lot of sympathy with the speaker tonight, and I said that two hearings ago on this. Um, my sympathy, however, arises out of my sense of what I would do if I were king with no rules. Unfortunately, that's not the case. We have a bunch of rules to apply, and applying those rules, I ended up voting the way I did. Um, I think that the minutes will certainly now reflect that there are two or three people who feel that this is something the council should consider and i think that that should be enough so i will uh, support i mean i will oppose this motion when i vote let's call the question okay. commissioner leon no commissioner Adenizer. yes commissioner Tomlin? uh no with a comment uh just to back up what commissioner Adenizer said is i think we have had situations where we did had a fee wave that was a much more closer vote, and there was not as many particular people that might be involved. So I think if you take this fee and divide it up among the amount of people that maybe had opposition, um, I think that's a little bit of a difference in clarification. So I do want to support what Commissioner Engineer said, but um, I think there are a little bit different circumstances. So I vote no on this. Okay. Commissioner Bradley? Like, I'll vote yes, but with a comment as well, is that, that in the first hearing when we heard this issue, that there was significant issue by most of the planning commission on this project. Um, most of the modifications that had been done on the second time were below ground. So I still think that there was enough of a dissent within the planning commission that it still is, that this is a non-trivial issue. So I will vote yes on the motion. Okay. Commissioner Nelson? No. And Vice Chair James? No, I'm going to vote no as well. Um, and I would agree with Commissioner Ray that these are not trivial matters. Mm -hmm. um, and that motion failed. Okay. So um, that concludes this matter? Right. So I'd just like to, um, it was the adoption of PC resolution number 2017 16. Uh, notice of decision will be issued with a 15 day appeal period. Thank you very much. Uh, all right, number three then.
again under continuing public hearings is the BLM View Preservation Notice of uh, Decision Case Number ZON 2016-00015, the RPV Estates HOA matter. Um, Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Good evening, Mr. Chairman and members of the Planning Commission. This item before you is an appeal of the Director's Notice of Decision for the Preservation Permit 2016-0015. The balance are the Rancho Palos Verdes Estates Community Association, who initially requested that the Planning Commission modify the Director's, director's Note Decision to limit tree reduction to two feet in height, and they have asked the Commission to require that the applicants, Mr. and Mrs. Kobayashi, post a bond to pay for the removal and replacement of trees should all seven pine trees die as a result of crown reduction. On December 13th, 2016, the commission heard public testimony, uh, held a, a lengthy discussion on the issue, and ultimately passed the motion to continue the item to February 14th to allow the applicant and the public to work out an agreement where trees would be removed, which, which trees would be removed in um, to introduce uh, new privacy foliage that would be installed to mitigate the loss of the trees. The Planning Commission also made it clear that the new privacy screening foliage must not impair the applicant's view. On February 14th, the parties requested and granted continuance of the hearing as they had not reached an agreement on March 28th. Again, the staff report uh, uh, reported that the commission, or excuse me, the, the parties here uh, removed two of the seven trees and other trees were removed, but the parties had not reached an agreement uh, on um, a full agreement at that point. On April 25th, staff reported again that the applicant had paid for the installation of the privacy foliage, but the association board had yet to conduct a meeting to determine whether tree number seven was to be removed. Thus, another continuance was requested by the parties and granted to tonight's meeting. So in summary, as you see in the slide here, uh, two trees were removed. Those were trees number one and number six. Uh, tree number one um, restored the view of the city base and where tree number six partially restored the view of the ocean and the, the shoreline, shoreline beyond. Um, two trees were trimmed in such a way where it satisfied the, the applicant and trees number four and five were decided and agreed to be left alone as they provided uh, meaningful privacy for the property owner adjacent to the trees, and that's Mrs. Kathy Campbell with the mayor call from the December 13th meeting. Again, you know, the, the, the only issue that remains is the, the destiny of what is to become of tree number seven, whether it's to be removed or to be trimmed. And again, the HOA has yet to have its, uh, its board uh, <clears throat> meeting to discuss the issue. Um, the association, they scheduled a meeting for June 15th, um, which is only a few days away, and there they will center their discussion on tree number seven, whether to remove it or to trim the trees. The appellant is requesting continuance so that they have that meeting to deliberate on the issue and uh, report back on June 27th. The, the applicants, on the, on the other hand, are not confident that the association will decide to trim or remove the tree, and the applicants do not wish that the commission continue the hearing to June 27th. Um, <clears throat> Since it, since it is conceivable that the commission may not grant a continuance request to June 27th, staff revisited the applicant's property on May 25th to assess the changes that occurred due to, due to the tree removal and tree trimming. Based on that visit to the viewing area, staff determined that the tree work that occurred eliminated the significant view impairment that tree numbers one through six caused. Therefore, staff reached the conclusion that Finding number two of the mandatory permit findings cannot be made as the trees no longer significantly impair the view. However, staff determined that tree number seven, that is the tree that uh, impaired the ocean and shoreline view, uh, continued to significantly impair that view. 
Since tree number seven continues to be significantly impaired with you, staff recommends that tree number seven be trimmed to a height level of 16 feet, which is a maximum height reduction allowed by the our city's guidelines, or an estimated two feet based on a measured height of 18 feet. Staff recommends that the tree be trimmed during the dormant season and maintained. This recommendation is in close agreement with the appellant's initial request to the commission. Staff would also recommend that the commission include a condition that requires the biannual maintenance trimming for trees two, three, and two, three, four, and five, and maintenance of the newly planted ficus trees from one to significant care the view in the future. Uh, these conditions are included in your draft resolution as exhibit A. Um, so, <clears throat> as an option for the commission to consider, staff included three possible uh, options. One is to uphold the director's approval but impose different conditions such as incremental trimming for one or more trees. The other option that is available to you is to overturn the director's approval and deny the view preservation permit application. Um, the last uh, alternative is to continue the hearing to June 27th to allow the association time to hold their board meeting and concerning tree number seven. And that concludes staff's report. Thank you. Any questions of staff for members? Questions, Mr. Advisor. Hey, Mr. Chairman. Uh, John, help me with my memory. Um, so you, you had a very complete report here, but you had a lot of issues to consider. I remember there was a discussion about cutting down tree number seven. Uh, the last time this issue came to the Planning Commission, uh, what well, I mean. That evening, what was our decision on, on tree number seven? The, the commission expressed their uh, preference for trimming down trees number, I believe, um, trees one, three, six, and seven. Trimming. Right. Remove what it says. Remove removal. Okay. And, uh, or as agreed to by, by the parties. Okay. And and then and then maybe this is a question for our how how many times has this issue been on the planning commission agenda over the last nine, twelve months? Not including this evening four times, beginning December 13, 2016. Yeah. And then I guess back to John. Um of course, the appeal procedure about the association and the applicants have demonstrated good faith efforts. Are you are you are you convinced? The the applicants uh, and, and I'm not questioning what you're right, and I'm not right. being cute. I'm just with, with respect to the remain. There's one remaining issue, and that's tree number seven. Uh, tree number seven. Uh, given, given the totality of what has occurred. Since December 13th, I do believe there were, have been good faith efforts on each part, but the, there there are. Um, it's not just the appellants and the the applicants that are parties to this agreement. There there has been uh, one of the concerned tree uh, excuse me uh, property owners nearest to the trees has been part of that discussion, and that's Kathy Campbell. She's not the appellant, but she's a concerned resident that lives closest to the tree. So I believe she had a real stake in, in part of the, the negotiation that occurred. So given the, the, the number of parties that were um, uh, asked to be asked to resolve this issue without the city's assistance, I do believe that they come close to reaching a, a good faith resolution. I mean, and as a comment, and then one more question. Uh, I mean, that's why we've continued it four times, but it's been, what, since December that we made a decision, and now I can see something about the HOA can't meet uh, over the intervening six month period, uh, and that causes concern. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Speakers? Uh, yeah, John, uh, just to remind me, um, I'm looking at the uh, 
the updated photo. And tree number seven, I don't remember this when I was out there uh, previously, but tree number seven looks like it's being eclipsed by a palm tree now. We're, I don't remember that palm tree being there. And isn't that palm tree more of a new issue than tree number seven is now? Since December, um, since December, this palm tree indeed has grown into that view. Um, that palm tree is located on a, an adjacent property, and uh, I believe the applicant has made some efforts to speak to the property owner to get them to trim the tree again to reduce that uh, impairment. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Um, yes. Is this photograph after the tree trim? This photograph, well, I believe that the, the initial tree trimming occurred in in March or April. Um, this photograph was taken in May. Well, I was I was up there uh, this afternoon, and unfortunately, I wasn't able to be on the on the, this deck to take a look at that. But in my estimation, from this picture, those are still a significant impairment of their view of the ocean. And so I know when we made these recommendations quite a while ago, we were talking about removal of trees, not taking a couple feet off the top. Um, and uh, um, the other thing is I have, uh, you know, it has been a long time. And we've had four meetings on this, and in fact, the homeowners association couldn't come up with a, uh, um, uh, a negotiation or resolution. Um, in that time, I, I don't have any confidence that waiting a couple days, moving out to you, can get to one. Now, the thing that I'm wondering is, um, has uh, have the uh, Kobayashi's endorsed the staff recommendation of just trimming tree number seven and being done? Uh, during, on May 25th, after meeting with uh, the Kobayashi's about the issue, I explained that the, the maximum height that the city could recommend trimming to is 16 feet, where the trees are roughly about 18 feet in height. They supported that, that um, recommendation because they believe that they're going to get their shoreline back and part of their, their ocean view back. But I don't believe these trees that as shown in this picture here are 16 feet tall. The trees number one, two, three, you know, those trees are undoubtedly more than 16 feet. 16 feet is the is lower than the root line for the house to sleep on the other side. So, for clarification, all the trees see it are over 16 feet in height. So the next question, the next test is whether you believe that those trees that are over 16 feet in height significantly impair the view. Staff concluded that all with the trimming that occurred and given the agreements that uh, transpired with the applicant and the appellant, tree number seven is the only tree that remains to significantly impair the view. And therefore, that's why, that's the reason why we're asking the commission to consider trimming it to 16 feet in height to preserve that view. Okay. Okay. Speaker, 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 Speaker. There are two speakers. The applicant is here, as well as, it's not the appellant, which is the association, but another speaker. And since this is an appeal hearing, you can always ask for, um, if you, the uh, applicant wants to rebut, but the applicant, the first speaker is June Kobayashi. Okay. Uh, good evening, Mr. Chairman and also members of the commission. Um, I'm Jim Kobayashi. My husband and I own the property of 59 to Bay Ridge, Espana. Um, we um, have had numerous meetings with 
for the association um, and um, also their child painting company. And um, we have, since then, as you know, have removed a few trees, um, we decided that um, certain trees could stay because they didn't, uh, the removal of, okay, let me go back. Um, I believe they removed tree number one, which opened up the view to the, um, the city. Um, tree number three was also discussed. Uh, however, tree number three, um, removing that alone would not give us a whole lot of view because tree number two was in the way. Um, tree number three, or tree number four and five, um, pretty much shade Kathy Campbell's house um, and also um, shade, uh, prevent us from being having a direct view to our house. So, and it didn't, removing those would not um, improve the view at all because your house is there. So we agreed to having um, those remain. Uh, tree number two and three have been shaped so we can see through them. Um, however, since they were shaped, um, it must be, I, I'm not sure if it was because of the rain or what, but they have grown considerably. You can see a lot of new growth, which is why they look um, very tall, but they originally were shaped and um, um, we were able to um, accept that. The only thing in question, as um, Mr. Alvarez said, is tree number seven. We would prefer to have it removed. However, um, we also would like this matter to be settled. It, as you know, we've been going over this since actually we started in 2014. And um, you, it's been before the board since December of last year. So we would like some kind of final resolution. Um, we don't feel that any kind of um, negotiation between us and the homeowners association is going to be productive um, anymore. We met with them numerous times, and we have we have um, expressed our own opinions. Um, so we have come to the conclusion that we read. I read Mr. Um, Alvarez's uh, staff recommendation, um, although it is not what we consider ideal, I think we can live with it. And uh, by the way, um, our neighbor has cut their tree. Um, and they've cut all of the fronds that have um, over, that overhang our fence, which is one of the main um, uh, the things that we have, one of the main things that we have. Um, so that's where we stand right now. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions to speaker? All right, thank you. Next speaker. The next, the next speaker is Kathy Campbell. Good evening, gentlemen. How are you? Um, I'm, I'm not sure procedurally how this proceeds because uh, I was going to ask that you continue the hearing until uh, the HOA board had a chance to meet because they're the ones with the legal authority over the property and the common area. So, uh, they, since they're the ones with the legal authority to make that decision, it seems that the most prudent course of action is to allow them to meet and make the decision. However, um, since it appears that is the is the hearing open or not open, reopen the public hearing, um, because I would like to address the issues that uh, remain with respect to the view um, restoration um, procedure in general. Uh, tree number seven, still um, the Kobayashis have, have, I just heard, are willing to live with trimming that tree. This was a protracted negotiation. And um, despite the fact that over 300 pages of material has been produced, not yet has the city addressed the issue of whether the staff or the planning commission has the legal authority to um, ignore the express statutory language of the ordinance, which has been ignored in this case because the ordinance requires that residents initiate the process and these are not residents. The ordinance requires that the view be taken from the viewing area and that the documentation be submitted um, be compliant and we have non-compliant um, documentation 
we have non-representative documentation because everyone is proceeding on the, um, with the assumption that the Kobayashi's ever had an ocean view. Kobayashi's paid $174,000 less for their property than the property to, uh, to Homes up, which is exact uh, model, exact square footage. Why do you think they paid one hundred and seventy-four thousand dollars less? Because it didn't have an ocean view. They submitted pictures from nineteen ninety-one without showing that these homes and these palm trees, which were built in nineteen ninety-five, uh, override the non-compliant documentation. In addition, uh, even if you trim or remove tree number seven. You can see in this photo, which I'll have to uh, request permission to post and share with you, that there are palm trees on the other side of tree number seven that you can see visible through this picture of um, the pine tree. So I'm asking you to um, uh, either continue the hearing, allow the HOA to meet, allow this matter to be resolved by the HOA, or deny the um, Deny the application, reject the resolution. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions? What's your last board? Kathy, what was your last board meeting? Our last board meeting was, I believe, in March, and in the March. work was not completed. And, and this was not a subject of the agenda, though it's been uh, before, I believe, you, uh, for how long now? Nine months? And the board was not. It was an agenda item on the March 9th meeting. The board voted unanimously to require the Kobayashis to fulfill their terms of the agreement because at the March 9th meeting, the Kobayashis did not fulfill their terms of the agreement and the agreement was not, um, the vegetation wasn't installed until the end of April. What is the recommendation for your board meeting? What is it, two days from now? The agenda has to be out, so what is the recommendation? It's, it's an agenda item uh, for discussion by the board. We have a five-member board. We have had issues with the uh, forum. We had a new board that took, um, that took offense on March 5th. Not all of the new board was members of the old board, so I think that you guys understand process and forum better than probably anybody else. So it was an agenda item. Um, and I communicated with the city to let them know that, that, that the HOA met and the decisions were made and that we were waiting until the work could be completed before we could um, we could uh, evaluate the so, decision. So it is on your agenda with absolutely no recommendation? Our agendas don't have recommendations. We allow the um, meeting to evolve with information. Uh, okay. And I think Mrs. Bill Biotis was right, nothing's going to happen. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Any other questions of the speaker? I do have a comment. Hello again. Uh, you said you're on the board? I'm not on the board. Uh, and, and so you're not an officer and you're not on the board. Okay, that, that was my question. Thank you very much. Um, and, may and, I have a question? Go ahead. Um, does the city ever intend to address the issue of whether um, the explicit language of the ordinance can be ignored? Okay, I'm not going to answer that question. I, I thought that we answered that the last hearing. We, we, that, that issue came up. There was a lengthy discussion on on the two points that Mrs. Campbell has raised, particularly about um, Kobayashi's being residents. And we looked up the, the definition and what the practices of the city and, and it was determined that they are taxpayers and they are protected by the ordinance, uh, whether they live in the city or not. Um, and, and that was reflected in what we looked up in the definition as resident at the December 13th hearing. That was my memory. Okay, so um, uh, there's no more speakers. Thank you. Yes, there are no other speakers. Um, okay, well, let's close the public hearing. Um, and then well, discussion. Anybody else want to chime in? I, I can start the discussion. Please. Okay. The HOA 
the legal association and for that property. Part of his charter is to be a good neighbor. This does not pass the smell test for a good HOA. This item has been, how do I want to put it, placed on the back burner. There's been excuse after excuse why they couldn't do anything. Uh, it appears to me the HOA basically has been an obstructive force for a reasonable homeowner request. I'm on the board of our HOA, I was on the board of our HOA. We had these few restoration things we usually settle within 30 days. This has been going on forever. It has not been in in two days. I can guarantee you, Commissioner Matz, when you are ready, uh, Mr. Chairman, I do have a motion. And any other? I'll make a comment that I believe that the city's rules associated with um, how tall foliage is allowed to be by right are very clear. Uh, the only subjective portion is this interpretation of significant view of impairment. And, uh, and I would maintain that the, uh, the view impairment that's in this uh, latest picture is significant. But there's also a, uh, you know, in the eye of the beholder. And so if the Kobayashis are willing to accept this degree of impairment uh, as insignificant, then, uh, then I'm willing to have an open mind about it. Decision until the budget. Okay, um, Chair, I don't think you do this. Uh, um, and I would abide by what the rest of the commission says. Is it possible to open the public hearing again to ask a question, Mrs. Connell? Sure. I, I, and before we go down this path too far, yeah. um, I, I am in agreement with the Kobayashis that there, if at all possible, I would like to see this matter resolved tonight. Um, I agree with the comments of a couple of commissioners that this board has had. We had the same discussion four months ago when they said, oh, gee, we have to be able to move. And there was a long discussion about well, why don't you call an emergency meeting and the boards do that. And without any real satisfactory answer, despite the fact that Ms. Campbell has fought the, the, the hard battle here and done it as well as can be expected, I think, she's not the board. We don't have a letter from the board. We don't have a single officer here. So I'm, I support that, but if you'd like to call back uh, the speaker and ask a question, if that will further get this matter resolved tonight, I'm all for it. So let's reopen the public hearing. And um, if I could ask um, Ms. Campbell, come back up to the, to the podium. Mr. Thomas. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, Kathy, Ms. Campbell, for what? What would you want to see, or what was expected to come out of the board meeting uh, if we were to continue this? What, what is what is the board going to be discussing, and what did you ask to bring on the agenda? I can't speculate to five different people's thoughts, but I believe that the board has not had a chance. Uh, the whole board has not had a chance to see this photo post trimming. And so I thought that the board would want to look at the photo and make a decision. Um, I also thought that um, uh, it is in the agenda packet that one of the mandatory findings that you're required to make uh, in order to have this is that there be evidence of early neighbor consultation and resolution. And the board went back through its correspondence and found a 2011 letter to the brokers of this property advising them uh, in response to their request that the trees be trimmed, that the HOA had, had a process and procedure and application and all of that information was forwarded to the uh, homeowners in 2011 and then nothing happened. So these trees were allowed to grow for, um, for seven years, uh, six years, and then they made their complaint. I have a copy of that correspondence with me. Um, and, um, you know, again, you have to make the mandatory findings that the statute requires. 
But last um, December 13th meeting, there was concern over two things. One was the privacy issue, and the other was the early neighborhood consultation. Um, so the board, those are the items that the board's going to see tomorrow night. New information, new board, and um, that's. In a follow-up to our, our chairman's question, is there a reason why there's not a board representative here or somebody to speak on behalf of the board to ask for this continuance? Because there's, there, we have a five-member board, two are out of town. The only day that they could get a quorum and that everybody is available is the 15th. Okay, all right, very good. Thank you for coming back up. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, all right, and I should, I guess, state that if Mrs. Kobayashi, if you would like a chance to rebut anything, uh, I would be willing to give you yeah. one more crack at it. If, you don't have to do it, but, but if you would like to say anything further, you, you have a right to speak. <laughs> I would just like to make a few comments, and this will be very short. Um, number one, um, one of the things that Kathy Campbell was talking about, um, me not having um, fulfilled all of my obligations, one of the things that I had agreed to was to be, do the replacement, um, to pay for the replacement foliage. Um, and they refused to discuss, even discuss tree number seven until I planted and pay for uh, the replacement um, planting. Their uh, landscape company did it. Um, I allowed that because I felt that they know, knew the area the best and they could make uh, good recommendations. So we had them, um, I agreed that they could do it and they did. Um, that was one of the reasons that this got delayed. Um, but I just want to make the comment that um, that has been done. Uh, the replacement foliage is all there. Um, so, and they were placed um, with Mrs. Campbell's approval. Um, she went with us and um, we decided where the trees would be planted and they are all planted. Um, so that issue, that is that issue. Um, we would really, like, I would say again, we would really like this to be set up this evening. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions of this speech? Yeah. You have a question in the statement? Yes. Yeah. Commissioner Lee. No, not Kathy. That's Kobe Ashen. Come on, please stand, please. Yeah. Um, usually when, when a, uh, a view action takes place, it's not, we plant a little, we check a little, we plant a little, we check a little. Usually it comes fully formed. And so you wouldn't have to put in plants before the, uh, the, the requirements for tree trimming were in place. So thank you very much for doing that. But my question specifically is about tree number seven and uh, what your, um, whether you're willing to live with the two foot reduction in crown height or um, whether you really feel that, that tree should be removed. Um, I have uh, two things to say about that tree. Um, the reason that it was not cut at the beginning was um, the association or, or representatives from the association um, asked that um, they, if they could remove tree number six, which was in front of it, and um, then wait to see, um, re evaluate tree number seven, which was in back, because we couldn't really see the effect um, that it would have, and they felt that tree number seven was lower on the slope, and therefore um, it might not be as big of a problem as we thought. When after they removed tree number six, um, it didn't seem to make any difference at all. Um, even other members of the board said that they didn't realize that tree number six was removed because that tree was still there. Um, so we originally requested that it be removed, and we have been going back and forth and back and forth. Um, we also suggested that um, it be cut down to at least give us um, the view over the tree so we can have a view of the ocean and maybe not even the um, lower part, the, um, uh, the port, 
Um, but uh, we were told by uh, then at last speaking, the last paper, that cutting the tree to give us any kind of a view um, would kill the tree. So that seems to be the impasse right now. That's where we are right now. And uh, then one last thing. Uh, as I recall, this the photograph here is just outside of your viewing area. Essentially, it's standing at the sliding glass window looking out over the porch. Is that correct? Um, I believe that's where Mr. Alvarez took the pictures from. That's correct. Right. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Nelson, do you have a question, speaker? No, I do not have a question, speaker. Okay, I, I have. I have a question of John Albert. Okay, well, before I do that, then let's reclose the public hearing, and then. Okay. John, you've been doing this for a long time. Who makes the final decision, the HOA or the Planning Commission? The Planning Commission. Thank you very much, gentlemen. You hear that? <laughs> planning Commission makes the final decision. Uh, Mrs. Kobayashi has asked us tonight for a final decision. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'll make a motion whenever you feel ready. Does anybody have a comment they want to make before they hear a motion? Go ahead. I'm going to to hold for just a second. Uh, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. As uh, Commissioner Nelson uh, so directly stated, uh, the citizens of RPD passed the view ordinance a few, uh, a few years ago. I find these view uh, issues to be the most contentious to come before the, the planning commission, uh, but I am not interested in relitigating what we discussed six months ago, and I cannot uh, support continuation. Uh, at the same time, I'm also not optimistic that we've heard the last of these trees. I think I understand the answer, but just for clarification, to get it on the record, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, if the HOA feels that our decision is not to their liking, they can make the appeal to the City Council. Would that be correct? That is correct. Okay, thank you. Okay, Commissioner Nelson, I believe you have a motion. Certainly do. I'd like to recommend, or I'd like to uh, move staff's recommendation with a modification as follows. There's a sentence in there that says, to memorialize the removal of trees one and six, to trim and maintain tree number seven to a 16 foot height, and to maintain trees two through five, et cetera. I'm gonna change that to say to remove trees number one, six, and seven, as we originally decided. That's my motion. Is there a second to that motion? I'll second it. Question of clarification. Um, just to make sure. So, originally, though, we didn't ask for removal of tree number seven. Did we? we, 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 we. It's the, vote, the motion from the um, February 14th meeting was Commissioner Nelson moved the removal of trees one, three, six, and seven. But there was also the the clause that said that however the parties may adjust the exact trees to be removed. They have now been unable to do that. That's why I'm coming back and saying we, Mr. Kobayashi, this was finalized. That's what we decided. We're going back to what we decided. That was the December meeting, correct? That we decided December 13th. December 13th. December 13th. Yes. Yeah. 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 That's what I remember. Yeah. Commissioner Leon. Um, now I think we need to be complete about the motion. And then with the remaining trees being trimmed, the only thing I'm the only thing I'm doing is saying instead of maintaining tree number seven, we are removing the tree number seven. We don't know right. We need to have the staff recommendation I, stand. I think what should be if that's to just clarify the motion, it should sit, read to memorialize the removal of trees number one and six, and to remove tree number seven because tree number seven. Is like that. I agree with that 100. And and then you also have and to trim. And, right, and to continue and to maintain tree numbers uh, two through five, new artifacts trees. Okay. 
So it's really staff recommendation with with the moving the rate increase out. Right. Mr. Chairman, can I ask you about Mr. Tom? I appreciate it. Did we all allow the parties though to come to some agreement though to negotiate out? And and just again as a point of clarification, did the the um, treating this tree number seven now by two feet, did that come about through the negotiations or was that a staff recommendation or how did we get to that point? But at some point we're allowing them to work this out among themselves. So I think so I could clarify that. The recommendation before you this evening to trim tree number seven by two feet is a staff recommendation. Okay. okay. And um, it does not reflect um, an agreement or memorialize an agreement between the two parties. Okay, and has there been any agreement up until this point in time uh, that's, that's still a point of contention between the two parties to make sure? Correct, there's been no agreement regarding tree number seven as expressed by both uh, Mrs. Kobayashi and Mrs. Campbell. Okay, thank you. Sure. Okay, so we have a motion and a second. Uh, any further comments on the motion on the floor? Okay, let's call the question. Okay, so the motion is to adopt PC resolution number 2017-17, uh, modifying the community development director's approval of view preservation permit case number 2016-0015 to remove to memorialize the removal of trees number one and six, to remove tree number seven to a 16-foot height. And to maintain no, no, to remove oh, to, tree number seven. Sorry, seven. Yes. to remove tree number seven. And to maintain tree numbers uh, two through five and the newly planted ficus trees within the common area using the city photo documentation dated May 25th, 2017 as the baseline view. Commissioner Leon? Yes. Commissioner Ebenizer? Yes. Commissioner Tomlin? Um no with the comment and the and the I guess the comment is with that is that probably Kobayashi would have agreed to a two foot trimming back. Um so I I'm not gonna vote no on that. Commissioner Bradley? Yes. Commissioner Nelson? Yes. Vice Chair James. I'm gonna vote yes also with the comment uh, and, and that is uh, thank <laughs> Ms. Campbell for her hard fight and the, the homeowners association ought to be thanking her as well because she's done as well as she can with almost zero support from the HOA. You know, evidently the HOA has got some members and yet they couldn't even get together a letter to us saying could you do this continuance. There's been nobody here at three or four different hearings. We pointed out before you can have emergency meetings that they've made very little effort. So if they end up being unhappy with this decision, it's certainly not Kathy Campbell's fault. It is, it is certainly the HOA's fault. And um, as a procedural matter, you would just put them in default if this was a court of law. So I'm going to vote yes, and um, uh, that should end this hearing. Okay. The motion passes, and um, there's a 15 day appeal period to the city council. Thank you very much. Or are we very close to the end? We, we should be very close to the end. Um, there's no continued business. Um, there is a new public hearing that there was that there, this request for a continuous on, as I remember. The, um, after the fact, rating permit goes for, let's see if we can push through yeah, that line yeah, as you go. Yeah, no, no, I understand. Um, this is the 5500 Palisbury Drive South matter. Uh, staff report on this. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and members of the commission. Um, in two years ago, staff found that there was unpermitted grading and unpermitted removal of habitat on portions of a private property at 55 Palisades Drive South and portions of the city owned Avalon Ecological Watchful Reserve property. The property owners recently, or earlier this year, submitted the appropriate application to rectify the unpermitted work which includes 6,600 cubic yards of grading balanced on site to recompact and to stabilize the area. Um, in looking
looking at this further, staff determined that this project cannot be exempt from CEQA because of the habitat removal at the least. So staff is recommending that this project be continued to a date certain to require the applicant to submit required biological reports um, necessary for staff to prepare mitigated negative declaration for this project. This concludes staff's presentation. We have any speakers so soon? There are no speakers. All right. Um, I'm gonna speak first myself for a change here that, that um, I had a discussion with the director before uh, our meeting tonight and I told him I'm a little bit concerned about taking matters off calendar and just having them be to some dates uncertain. My recommendation would be to continue this matter at least for a holding date to September 26th meeting so that we've had a, a place and then if necessary have a staff report and a request for a further continuance at that time. But I open it to other comments from the commissioners. That's a motion on second. I'll make that as a motion then. Okay. Is there a second? I second. Okay. That's to continue the public hearing to September 26th. Okay, let's have a vote on this one. Okay. Commissioner Leon? Yes. Commissioner Ebenezer? Yes. Commissioner Tomlin? Yes. Commissioner Bradley? Yes. Commissioner Nelson? Yes. Vice Chair James? Uh, yes. Motion passes. Okay, new business. Hearing nothing that uh, we have nothing from staff. Items on uh, future agendas. The only matter now on the June 27th meeting is this orientation from Public Works. And I'm told by uh, Ara that uh, he's estimating that this could be one or two hours of a presentation. Uh, it's an important start to something we've already heard speakers on. And as tempting as it might be to put that off, I would say that we need to have that meeting and have that presentation. Any comments on that? You have, you have you go around to everybody's kind of comment. <laughs> okay, let's the only question here is whether this is going to be on the agenda. Chairman, we need to take a break if this is going to drag on three minutes. I I I I'm going to be brief, Mr. Chairman. All right, uh, well, Commissioner Tom, the first thing you need. Orientation meaning, uh, could you explain a little bit about what orientation is and what, what uh, sure what's going to happen? So, the ordinance that the speaker was referring to earlier this evening, uh, Chapter 12, or Type um, of the Municipal Code, deals with, was newly adopted by the City Council approximately a year ago and deals with wireless facilities in the public right of way. Built into that ordinance, the Planning Commission is going to be asked to review um, applications in the public right of, way, right of way regarding aesthetics. The city feels that the commission can benefit from um, some sort of orientation where we discuss the ordinance, the co components of the ordinance, what the findings are to be made because this is a new ordinance that the commission will be asked to, to participate in. And so, um, Public Works is requesting to come in before any of these applications are heard by the planning commission to orient you and, and as well as Crown Castle to come in and give a discussion on on how they are processing this ordinance. Could I ask a follow-up question, okay, Mr. Chair? Um, the calls I received today said that cell sites were actually installed and I don't remember that coming in front of me in particular is that correct? Are they, are, are, is this company or are cell sites being installed? There are mock-ups mock mock as part of the, um, the new ordinance. It requires that a mock-up be installed and that a notice be sent to the property owners notifying them that a mock-up is up, followed by another notice indicating when the public hearing is going to be before the planning commission. Okay, so that's what I saw. What they're seeing is an actual mock-up. That is correct. I, I should point out that there may have been some infrastructure or conduit laid uh, under previous approvals before the city council adopted this new ordinance so that may you may be hearing some or receiving some email or some correspondence about some uh, wiring that's already been put in place and that's because there were approvals encroachment permits obtained by public works prior to the new ordinance okay thank you for the thank you mr chairman um i'm just I wanted to say that I'm so glad that I don't have to recuse on this issue anymore. Uh, and I hope that the review uh, will be a top to bottom review of this issue because I think it's 
I think there's all sorts of issues about technology and camouflage and public notice that really need, really need to deep dive. It's a complex issue and the technology is changing very rapidly. Thank you. Chanel, start with that. Any further? Yeah, I mean, just one quick comment. I, I am one who has stopped one of these. Uh, in front of Mr. Emmenheiser's home, uh, we were told on Saturday morning that the Terranea needed to put it up for a very important visitor. And that sucker got ripped down within 48 hours. The trick is, once you turn them on, they can receive 911. Once they can receive 911, you can't turn them off. So the trick these guys are doing is showing up, doing it on the weekend, turning them on, you can't turn them off. And that was exactly the case on PB Drive South up by Terranail Way. The guy tried it. And luckily we had a city inspector out here and he jumped on it and stopped. But that, that's how it's working. It's as fast as they can get it done and turned on. I think all of these comments can be addressed on June 27th, which seems like the appropriate time to raise all of oh, them. I'll have it expanded by then. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> Is there do I hear a motion to adjourn? Please. Yes. Motion. Is there a motion? All right. Found in favor. All right. So we are adjourned. Thank you all very much.